So, Pete, what have you been working on lately and what's been happening? Very timely question, Bruce. So, 1st of August today, so I can reflect back on July. Interesting, interesting month. And as usual, the typical flavour and the type of work that we are doing within uh, Benchmark Business Advisory really revolves around people. So, there's a lot of uh, change management from a mindset point of view, cultural, behavioural, uh, organisational redesign. So three that I've written here is um, we've got an interesting engagement at the moment where we're assisting an organization redesign and restructure their team. So roles, responsibilities, uh, educating management and owners on how to uh, performance manage and how to actually implement human systems. Mm -hmm. Now, but, and this is what makes it interesting, but while we're doing that, we're at the same time also welcoming fresh blood to the team because this business is just going through an acquisition. So they just acquired another business. Mm -hmm. So they're bolting on. Uh, you know, not not just the new um, systems and processes, but they're bringing in fresh blood into the team. And that's always interesting culturally. Mm. So that's an ongoing engagement. That's going to take a few months for, for us to, you know, settle down and uh, bed things down. Uh, the other one's also uh, interesting. This one's very difficult uh, in terms of engagement because of the type of personalities involved. So we're working with a professional services firm. They've got a very senior team, highly experienced team of uh, professionals. And what we're doing there is we're helping the team embark on a completely new direction for the business. And so when you're dealing with the high, uh, highly influential, highly sort of geared individuals that are motivated, energetic, they've been around a long time, it makes the, the challenge that much more difficult and interesting. They know what they want. They know the direction, but there's a bit of argy-bargy. And, and even though they know, there's still a lot of gaps there. So we're assisting them with the gaps and we're assisting them in... Uh, the right strategies and planning and implementing that. Just quickly on that one. Yeah. So when you say highly geared, first of all, you don't mean a lot of debt. You mean that they're kind of... I'm, when I mean highly geared, I'm, I'm talking highly wound. In yes. Yes. Very wound, very driven. You know, full on. Driven, I would probably say that, uh, yeah, driven's a good word that we can use. Okay. Very driven individual. So the other thing is, if you have... One of the challenges I imagine that you'd have, I haven't spoken about this, is if you're dealing with... A, a, a company where there's more than one owner or more than one controller, you've got diff within that the oh, group there could the, be different dynamics. Absolutely, yeah. and in fact, the previous example that I gave of um, the redesign activity, uh, one of the things that we're we're working on is making sure that the two owners are no longer butting heads. Mm. That's why we've got to go through the redesign because they're stepping on each other's toes. They're stepping on the team's toes. Uh, one owner is not following one. A set of processes they want to do it their way because well i'm the owner and i can do it this way and mm -hmm. you know so there's a lot of that uh behavior modification that we have to assist with mm. and we have to do it in a way where we're, we're not uh causing extra angst we're not causing ex extra clash internally we've seen this sometimes in family businesses where we're engaged to assist in sometimes removing people out of an, out of an organization and when it's a family situation got to do it very delicately so you don't end up causing chaos so hard yeah so the other example uh interesting one that we were working on uh, in july was uh changing the processes um of an individual in particular that is the leader of an organization that is highly um highly impacts the outcome of sales activities and highly actually impacts what happens down the chain for the staff that's delivering the work this individual is just stuck in their way in terms of doing everything on pieces of paper, literally random pieces of paper, not following process. We need to digitize that business. We need to set in stone, not just digital technologies, but appropriate procedures. But this individual is pushing back. And so we're having to change his behavior because mm. he's just causing too many problems for mm. the business. And mm. so that's an interesting one and there is a way that we uh we approach those sort of situations we use facts we use data we use evidence to sit down with that person and say listen we've done the analysis here are the facts here's how much it's costing the business here are the issues that it's, it's uh, causing your staff we're making them aware so that they understand why they need to make this behavior change and why this will actually lead to a more valuable business by doing this so there's some of the uh, interesting engagement yeah, challenges where uh, the team's working on. So I think for the benefit of people listening, one of the things that uh, you're focusing on into the future is how uh, you can uh, adapt uh, AI into business Absolutely. management, operation, marketing, all facets. Absolutely. And how you can uh, assist others to take advantage of where technology is moving very, very quickly.
But paradoxically, you know, and as much as we're, we're, we're focusing on AI and talk about AI, paradoxically, we actually can't do that without the human components. We really, really focus on the people first. Let's mm-hmm. fix any people issues first. Mm-hmm. Then we can talk about the AI. You don't go back to front because if you do, mm-hmm. it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, it's, it's, it, it's proven. So we know if we adjust the human, if we get the people on board, everyone culturally on the same same page, then we've got yeah. a better, better uh, platform to be. Yeah. Can I tell you a little bit about? Oh, I'd love to hear it. What's that sales? sales? So, uh, I just wrote down a few stats, but uh, and and a few things. Very quickly, we've got about 116 businesses under contract at the moment, so that's above par, which is good. Fantastic. Uh, about 500 listings, but we need more. So this is one of the current things that's uh, happening. You know, supply and demand is always uh, moving. Either there's more people wanting to buy, or less people wanting to buy, or people wanting to sell, less people wanting to sell. Whatever reasons, uh, we have quite a f- strong buy demand and not enough businesses to meet that demand. And uh, the the biggest hole, the biggest area where we need businesses to sell, is in that sort of two to five million dollar value space. So there's many, many, many more buyers in that space right now and growing. I think in the biggest space. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. You know, I've been doing this since 2025, and uh, someone, a guy Brian Sand, who works with us in West in South Australia, has been breaking for 30 plus years. And he can remember when a five hundred thousand dollar business sale was a big deal. Now, anything under five hundred thousand is considered to be pretty small. And um, the the two to five million dollar space is really where the biggest demand is. It's high growing demand and not enough supply. So if anyone's got a business that they want to sell, now it's probably a good time. Um, we've also got an interesting uh, change in mindset happening with buyers and sellers, which is right now, which is that um, earnouts is becoming more of a, a thing or retention. So uh, the larger the scale size of the transaction, the more lo- likely it is that the buyer is not going to pay all the money up front. Mm-hmm. They're going to say, we'll give you so much now and the balance over the next three or four years based on performance. Right. And a lot of sellers aren't um, doing two things. They're not used to that. So that idea concerns them and, and, and it should because mm-hmm. there's so many moving parts there. But those people are also not, willing to engage professionals, accountants and lawyers to give them advice about how to make that work. Because quite often, most of the time actually, you can get more for your business if you do enable the transaction to take place through an earn in it or a retention clause or vendor finance or some other means like that. But people are really reluctant to do this, sort of saying, I want the money now and I'm... No, I've given you away. the keys. Yeah. yeah. But um, that, the, the future is that many, most buyers are going to want to have the seller have some skin in the game and have a, a position in place where they have to they're, they're proving the numbers that they're selling their business on. Uh, that's going to happen more. And more that's and interesting. More. We should uh, definitely do a, a, a podcast on that. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, I think. Oh, we've got so many things we can talk about in the future. <laughs> AI and ego and uh, oh, look. The up. good thing is that people people are slowly business owners are slowly learning that this is the way the market's mm-hmm. moving. Um, it's just that. And we really make the world a better place for everybody if they, if business owners were prepared to spend the money to engage the very best advice from the outset. Mm-hmm. So you know the old saying is true: you get what you pay for. And too many people try, and a lot of people have made money out of their business, but not on what they've earned, but what they've saved. So they're very good at saving money. So they don't like to spend the money on getting advice from their accountant or lawyer. But in, when it comes time to selling. It's really yeah. important to spend the money and get the best advice. It's a false economy. And the other thing is, the other reason you want to do that is because this alleviates, so seeking advice alleviates that whole fear that people might have that, yeah. okay, I go down that path, you're going to give me X amount uh, up front, but how do I know that you're not going to deliberately cause issues so that you don't have to pay me that out or you don't have to pay me so yeah, much? Yeah, that's right. And that's the first thing that I'm thinking is, okay, well, that's well and good, Bruce, but how do I know? Because I'm in, I'm not in control anymore. I've given you the keys. I don't know if you write off the. And, and you know. good lawyers make that normal, and they make it safe. Yeah, and yeah. So that's why you got to get the advice. The good ones, though, you know. Yeah. The, the, it's, you know, law is like medicine; they're specialists. Yep. So you can't just go to a lawyer and say, "I've got a contract on selling my business. Can you help me?" You need to go to a specialist mm-hmm. lawyer, just like you need to go to a heart surgeon for your heart, and you know, and so on. Yep. Getting good advice is, is really what you got to pay for. You mm-hmm. pay more for a specialist. You pay more to get a great advice, but it's important. So a lot of people don't realise when they sell their business, they could be subject to Division 7A loans or capital gains tax. and They need to get advice to sort that out now. So that's where we're at at the moment, Pete. That's the market today. And um, I look forward to catching up with you in September and seeing what's happening. Fantastic. Now. Sounds good. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, everyone.